Welcome back you beautiful people, we are Gemma and Campbell and this week we are going to show you what day to day van life in Spain is really like. We are having a bit of a problem this morning. The police just drove past as well but they didn't seem too fussed. I never know what's right and what's not to be honest. And that is some facilities with a view. Living this simple life on the road is not always easy, but it is always worth it for the incredible experiences that we get to have. Join us this week as we navigate the challenges of van life from cooking in a tiny kitchen to dealing with the unexpected breakdowns that happen along the way. Come along for the ride and see the real side of van life in Spain and if you're new around here and want to see more of our adventures on the road then hit the subscribe button and join the gang. But for now let's check back in as we go about our day to day life in our motorhome in the beautiful country of northern Spain. So Gemma has just sent me inside to pick up some rolls for breakfast, however it's always a dangerous thing leaving me to shop by myself. How can I say no to that? One euro ten for that. I've got a little treat for you, babe. Do you want to lift the spinach up? Oh. <laughs> One euro. How can oh, I not? Come on. When was the last time you had milk? I know. I actually think that we only video when we are eating unhealthily. Like, literally, we cook up so many delicious, nutritious meals. But for some reason, we don't show you them. <laughs> I don't know why. We're showing you all the junk that we eat. I swear we are actually very healthy people. We just like to indulge and we like to share how much we indulge with you guys. The plans for today is we're heading north from Pots because we just read online that there's this thermal spa, hence why we haven't showered yet. We figured we may as well go and bathe in the river to start our day off. We're very excited to go and check that out. Tell me, baby, where are you going? Prairie wind goes on blowing. Tumbleweed shadow, I'm tired to Okay, so I think we've found the river that we're talking about. However, it doesn't actually seem to be a thermal spa. It's just basically the river we were driving along last night that took us in towards the town of Pots. And looking at it on Google compared to what it looks like now, it's definitely not the right time of year to be swimming in it. On Google, it's pretty much this calm, free-flowing river. Maybe there's some thermal springs that join it at some point. But right now, that is literally just snow melt. I'm not expecting this to be warm at all. I've uh, found a little bit. Maybe I can access, test the water out down there. Oh, come on. Whew. Yeah. I mean, it's not as cold as it is in Scotland, but it's definitely not a thermal spa. And yeah, I think it might be a little bit of a false alarm. I don't think there are any thermal baths in the Pico de Europa National Park. So since we're just parked up here, side of the road, with some beautiful views of the mountains, I figured we may as well just have breakfast here before we move on. And the inside of the van is looking a little bit dirty, so now is the perfect time to actually take all the carpets out and give it a good clean. <clears throat> the police just drove past as well, but they didn't seem too fussed. I never know what's right and what's not, to be honest. This looks like a good spot. It does, doesn't it? He's over there doing his van, so... Ah, yeah, this must be out here then. It is actually quite incredible how good the facilities in Europe actually are. Like, we've not really struggled at all, have we? No. It's just so, so good. And I don't even see any signs talking about a cost here. I literally think it's free. And that is some facilities with a view. Now, if you remember in last week's episode, we actually replaced our propane gas with butane. We have been having a little bit of a problem since then, in the sense of I think it's to do with the flow rate. We can't run the fridge, the hot water, the heating, and the cooker. It might sound like a lot, but on the last gas bottles, we had no problem whatsoever. I don't know if it's because we not only have the regulator on top of the butane bottle now, but we also have the old propane regulator, and I think they're just not really clicking. So basically what I think will be the solution is instead of having this new regulator going into the old regulator, I might just actually try and bypass it altogether and then I can just go straight into the system because we literally we don't need two regulators so there's no point in it. Okay, actually, story of my life. It's not as simple as I thought. Basically, the way that the system is designed is I've got a female thread and I've got a female thread here. 
and the only kind of adapter that I've got is this thing here that I just took out. That's the regulator that I was trying to bypass. It'd just be we need to turn the fridge off whenever we want to take a shower, but oh well. Yeah, better than nothing, I guess. Oh well, I admit defeat and put it back together. Are you prepping for some food, baby? Um, so, we are having some of our, what would I call it? Kind of garlic tofu orzo thing. Let's call it a summer salad. We, um, this is one of our go-tos. If we are ever, well, I wouldn't even say if we're ever stuck. We actually just normally look at each other and it's go. It's easy and as much as you have to do a little bit of marinating, it is so tasty and so, so worth it. Good morning everyone, we have been treated to an absolutely spectacular sky this morning. Literally just woke up in time, opened up the blinds to see the sky explode in pink. We did end up just staying at the spot last night where we were dumping the waste and swapping up our water. And luckily the sheep are just starting to wake up, so those little bells didn't keep us awake all night long. You know what, I think we've found the noisy culprits. Honestly, I was watching, I thought it was like cowbells or something, but... Just noticed it's the sheep. I thought it was like someone had put them on a fence or something and it was a wind that was blowing them, but no, it's the sheep munching the daffodils up on the hill. It is a cracking little spot this though. There's maybe like five other vans and it's just so peaceful and so quiet, despite a main road being right there. It is really a really good spot. So another reason we decided to camp there last night was because it was so peaceful, but also when we went to walk down to this little park yesterday, we discovered that there's actually all of this gym equipment. And the walk along the river makes for the perfect little running circuit. So we decided let's hang around and get out this morning and go for a little workout. So we've got loads of different pieces of equipment and I thought it's actually the perfect little place to come down and just do something different rather than just doing the same thing over and over again. These seem to be quite popular in Europe actually. We've seen these a number of different places and I think they're such a good idea, especially if you're living in your van and you're just looking for some way to get out and actually move your body. Nice easy one, finish it off. Well done. Well, well done, still got to run back. I know. <sighs> well done, babe. Well done. Woo! Gubbed. All right, just finished lunch. I had a delicious one after a workout and um, we're actually planning on heading out of the national park now west because we had loads of recommendations at this small town called Ovedo and it's going to be an hour and a half to get there driving basically up to the coast and then along. Should we get going? Let's do it. We wave goodbye to the beautiful Pico de Europa National Park. So grateful to have stumbled across this hidden gem of Spain and for the opportunity to explore its breathtaking landscape. It was a sad trip, however, as we knew it meant our time in Spain was quickly coming to an end as we headed to our final stop of the trip, the vibrant city of Oviedo. That's always a welcome sight, isn't it? Oh, that looks like it's down there. Yeah, I guess so, there's loads of bones. I honestly think that's fine. Level. We are having a bit of a problem this morning. How are you doing? Oh, not good. No? No. Worse than before? Yeah, I think so. I've taken all apart and I kind of get it back together. Oh no. <laughs> We've been having a problem like on and off with it for a while now, where it just randomly doesn't work. More so just the last couple of days though. Uh huh. And then you wiggle it and it starts working, but that's been happening since we got the van. Because you wiggle it and it starts working. But yeah, now it's just not working at all. And it's the only way we can get water into our van. Why does this always happen at the weekend? I think what we may need to do is just completely scrap the whole whale pump and just have a good old fashioned funnel system, like every other van has, where it's just got a lock cap and then you just pour water in. Mm -hmm. It's so much simpler. I, know. I don't know why it's got this whole system here. I've never seen this before. No. 
Right, moment of truth then. The main problem with this is like we could just drink water from the big bucket things, but it's like we can't use the shower, the shower or um, wash our dishes or anything like that because we heat up our water through the boiler, which gets its water from the water tank. No. 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 Oh. <gasps> I'm fed up with this. Ellie, oh, no. please. Give me a break. Alright, so while we're on the subject of making changes to Ellie, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to chat to you guys about what we actually have planned over the next few days. Now, this one here apparently has been moaning about the lack of mirrors. I said that we've got one just over there. Not good enough, apparently. No, so what we do? Not good enough. We want to get another one. We want to get one, especially for the back of the van where we have the sink area. We want to get a bigger one. The one that's there is actually got a big kind of wooden border around it and it's off center. We want to get one that's a bit nicer and bit brighter. I think it just brightens up the space a little bit as well, having a good mirror. So we're going to go into Ikea. Had a little mooch around yesterday, got a bit of inspiration. Can I just also point out how many times she said we there? There's not that much we. It's definitely just a one-sided thing. I think Ellie's beautiful the way she is. This means we. Okay, yes. Oh, right. Stuck with it now. I'm glad we didn't convert Ellie because actually even just decorating her is stressful. Oh, it's a bit cold. Oh, yes. I think we could even take measurements for a little. I like that plan too. But we need to think about shelving for in the bedroom area. I think that we can like put the bottles in so you can pull the basket. I've got a few different plants in mind that I want to get. I'd also like one behind the mirror, but one of those kind of long ones that could like drape around the mirror. <laughs> this is only doing one tiny part. That's just the mirror. That's not even to decorate the mirror. The whole reason we're going on this massive spending spree is basically operation cleanup in this back corner. Like this is the darkest and most dingy part of our entire van. And then this mirror that's well past its best. Now the first step is of course cleaning it up. And then what we're planning on doing is taking this mirror off and putting the new mirror in instead. And hopefully that should start out most of our troubles that we're having. Now I do believe to actually get that mirror off screws might be in this cupboard, so I think I need to go in from the other side. Yeah, they're well and truly stuck. I need to rely on good old-fashioned muscle. This is why I do my press-ups. All that spinach is paying off. What did you get for us? I just got these lights. Oh, we had no yeah, baskets okay. at all. Um, but I got some new fairy lights because these ones were much cheaper than IKEA. And um, we got ones for like a tenner, I think, yeah. at IKEA. These ones are only two euros. And I got some little strip lights as well that I thought we could try out. Again, only two euros. So not Perfect. bad. But Primark had no like baskets. I think that looks brilliant. Good. Yeah. Just so much brighter with that there instead. Yeah. Isn't it? Well happy with that. Oh, I need it is. Just in time. Oh, yeah. And that is going to be the rest of our afternoon. Okay. <laughs> After cheering on our team for the afternoon, we decided to end our time in Spain with a night out in Oviedo to try out the famous Sidra experience. Of course, as it was us two, this didn't precisely go to plan. Yeah, we are having a major problem. Do you want to update us what's <laughs> well, going on? The major problem basically is, is that we are too hungry. We've left this too late. It is now 7 o'clock. A lot of the restaurants aren't opening until like 8, half 8. And I think our last bus was at half 8. So we might just be, we might have just found a pizzeria that's already open. I'm not mad about another pizza. I say another one, it was like over a week ago we went Any the excuse one. for a pizza, <laughs> to be honest with you. We tried our best, Spain. We want to try your food, but A, it's not vegetarian, and B, your restaurants don't open until about half past eight at night. And this little boy is in bed by then. So, pizza it is. Lonely hearts, lonely places that's near at long. But with all these tears and heartaches dear, I still have sweet dreams of you. Yeah, good morning. 
so we have had so much fun in Spain but it's getting a bit grey today and I think it's the perfect time for us to move on to Portugal so we will see you there if you've enjoyed this and you want to see more of what's coming then make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you liked it of course give it a big thumbs up and we'll see you again in the next one